Welcome to the new chapter of the Guidebook of the Week series. Uh, last last two weeks, um, the, the guidebook that went out uh, was the food and beverage one, and I wanted to stay um, in the realm of the process manufacturing industry. Uh, so this guidebook uh, this week will be regarding pharmaceutical process, uh, but I mean, it can be applied to uh, any types of operation where you're either maybe like working with liquids uh, or also just essentially running a process line, setting up a machine. Again, kind of similar to the food and beverage one, but instead of having time-based uh, inspections, uh, you're just letting the machine run and then you can have VKS on the side and you'll be able to use it to um, make note of uh, certain issues that keep happening or if you need help of uh, for someone. Uh, also, it's good for any customer that is working in the uh, medical industry as well, because uh, it includes lots of the elements you'd see um, in the required FDA 21 CFR Part 11 compliance. Uh, so let's move right away in there. There you go. Job selector. Let's start a new job for now. So let's hit new. And first thing, I've got my form here asking me which batch number I'm working on. Because obviously this term, you can rename it to, to anything. So here, I'll be working on this one for a production quantity of 210 kilograms, which is already preset. Um, so I assume that every time I do run this batch, uh, this is for um, this weight. So let's hit save there. First step, uh, uh, making sure I'm working the proper I'm wearing the proper PPE. I also have some pictograms to remind myself um, that it's the case. Uh, as I move on, just a safety acknowledgement at first so I can confirm I'm, I'm wearing this. And of course, this will be timestamped to my name in the report. So let's hit save on that. Uh, and here, uh, you can see that my first step consists of multiple pictures. It can always be a collage of, of different things. It doesn't have to be one step. Uh, in this case, it's asking me to make sure I have performed the quality checks for each one of those regions that I'm going to mix together in my tank. Uh, what I could have done is added steps in this instruction showing me how to do those quality checks. Uh, but in my case, what I prefer to do is just link to additional work instructions showing me how to do that. So I don't have to put a bunch of images in there. Maybe I already know how to do this quality check. Uh, maybe I need to reuse those steps in another instruction and I don't want to copy and paste multiple uh, versions of the same step. So what I can do, I can just click on those regions. So if I click on purified water, it will open a separate work instruction um, showing me how to do so. And what I can do from there is just uh, go through this instruction. It doesn't really have data capture form in this one, uh, but you could trace back your quality check to a certain batch number that you can then reuse in the uh, pharma example. So I'm not going to run into that. That's just for the example. Um, instead of linking to other instructions, what you can do instead is simply have an attachments open up. So it could be a PDF showing me how to do this uh, step. Um, it could open up even a web page if you want. Uh, so once you're done with your tests, then we can move on. And then, of course, we need to have traceability of uh, what we'll be mixing together. So I can just confirm I've done my checks. And then what I could do is just scan in the batch numbers of the regions I'm using. Every batch number now appears at the bottom right, so I'm reminded of uh, which one I need to use for the rest of my job. Uh, here, pretty simple, start the main vacuum. I'm using my droplets to show which button to click on. Just going to move over there. Kind of the same thing, but uh, if in this case the sequence is very important, I can have those droplets uh, blink one after the other if I want. Same thing here, instead of having one image, we're having a collage of different pictures. And then here I'm ready to start the test. So at this point, it literally tells me it takes two hours to, to do this, um, this production. So what I, I could have done right now is just exit the work instruction 
Uh, and maybe I have a separate guidebook showing me on how to do the cleaning and finishing everything. In this case, I prefer just leaving maybe the tablet or the computer next to the mixing tank, letting it run, because I mean, you're still capturing productivity information. And while the machine is running, you can still use some of the forms on the side here. So some of them, you might have seen them in other, um, other videos of the guidebook of the week series. Uh, for example, here I've got that manually open form called alarm report. So while this runs, if there is an alarm, I can go by the tank and just click on this form right here, alarm report, and just log it. So now you have a trace of having that particular alarm at this time. You could just leave this open if you want and just hit save when you fixed everything. And now you have time um, of how long, I mean, this uh, alarm lasted because you get the time step of when this form showed up and you get the time stamp of when you're actually saving it. I've got others here mainly used for communication. Uh, for example, I've got the request help form where I can pick certain department or role. I can add some details. I can attach a picture if I want, and this will be sent uh, via email to the relevant users. Of course, what I can do is simply use the send a message function. But in this case, I can't really attach a picture. I've got something else. Let's say that I'm starting the batch, but now my shift is over. So somebody else is going to take over. Well, I also have that leave comment form here where I can write something down. Uh, for example, be careful of the leaking on the valve B. Hit save and this comment shows up here. So if somebody else takes over, they'll be able to see those comments and react accordingly. Uh, of course, if I do have an issue, I can always open up the non-conformance report and then I can log the information. And I mean, you can use sign offs in those forms. So here it's going to ask for the quality inspector before I can log uh, this non-conformance. Um, in this case here, automatically, the work instruction will move on to the next step after the two hours. Uh, we don't want those videos to be too long, so obviously I'm going to skip over to the next step. Uh, release the flow valve, perform color test. So here we've got something new that we haven't seen before in the other videos, uh, which is um, a control chart. So here I need to perform a certain test. And I mean, again, I have a link that will show me how to use this particular tool if I don't know how to use it. But then when I move on to the next step, I do have my control chart opening up on screen, asking me to pick the equipment with which I'm working on. So in this case, volume uh, vacuum mixer number one, and then I can enter a value. And if I enter something that is out of this range, VKS will automatically send an alert to the right people. In my case, let's say uh, the measurement's fine, 1.05, I can hit save, and whatever I've entered will be logged in my report, but also at any point in time, I can see any deviations that I had in the past. And the sampling rate of this control chart can be whatever you want. In this case, it's going to ask me for that measurement for every batch that I'm running. Uh, but you can change that. You can ask for a measurement for, for every hour, uh, every 10 batches if you want. Uh, every day at a specific time, you can take the pH of a certain solution, um, totally up to you. I'll just move over. Then I've got the uh, final inspection that I got to fill. Uh, checklist, tank is sealed, equipment sanitized, absent of four ring body, let's go. Mixture, batch number, let's remove that chrome pre-fill. Add the actual batch number, making sure it, it matches whatever... Um, we're working on and then asking for the supervisor signature. Let's say I've got someone with me signing on here. And then instead of just saving this form, it's preset. So when I hit save, it actually generates a PDF that I can print. Then I can just use this piece of paper and just put it in the tank sleeve like the instructions asking me to do. So now everybody walking by uh, can see that uh, this batch is finished and it got all the, uh, the signatures and the checks on it. I arrive at the end, last step, 
we've detected that you've reached the expected quantity. So automatically everything closes. Uh, I can confirm the actual final weight of my solution. And then that's it. Uh, I hope you, you learned um, today in uh, how you can use VKS to run a process where you're not necessarily building units one after another. Um, it's not like the food and beverage one either where you're working with uh, units. In this case, you're just working with um, essentially liquids, uh, but it could be it could be just running a certain line. Um, it could be anything. Um, so thank you everyone for, for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.